So when I was a kid, sometimes you'd have, we all played Super Nintendo back then, and sometimes you'd have the kid on the playground who claimed to have inside knowledge about future games coming up because his uncle works at Nintendo. Anyway, the modern equivalent of that with the PC gaming space is the leakers who seem to know what's happening with all of the new GPUs uh, before anybody else does. Now, are they random people tweeting random stuff that they hope is right on Twitter to get attention? Or do they have actual inside information? Well, when you start to see a pattern of particular leakers getting things right in previous GPU launches, then it does lend some credence to what they have to say. Now, there's a uh, Digimon, or I guess Greymon to be specific, I think is where these uh, t tweets are coming from that this headline is based on, <laughs> um, who has leaked things accurately in the past, so we could give it some credence. And according to him, the top-end Navi 31 GPU, which we would assume, as long as naming schemes and everything stay consistent from generation to generation, would be the equivalent of the 7900 XT, so the, you know, the, the newer version of the 6900 XT. Well, a hundred teraflops, not quite. He actually tweeted 92. This headline is designed to, you know, <laughs> grab your attention, I suppose. I'm getting this from WCCF Tech. I also have a reported from uh, video cards, but they're both getting their information from Graymon55. And he's also saying that the frequency could be hitting over three gigahertz. Now, what is the context of that? And what does this even mean? What is, what is a hundred teraflops? Well, let's dig into this a little bit. First of all, um, I think his first tweet, it's not showing it anymore. L last time I saw it, it was actually in reply to his own tweet from a while back, giving some uh, details about the, um, the, the Navi 31 die. And in the old one, he said it would be boosting to around 2.5 gigahertz. And this was from a long time ago. Um, and then he also gave some specs that it would have 15,360 stream processors. Um, and, and some other info, but his updated tweet uh, was claiming that this could reach up to 92 teraflops of floating point 32 uh, calculations. Now, um, regarding the clock speed and how it could get there, so if his old one wasn't predicting that, why is he changing this? Is this the kid on the playground talking about his uncle working at Nintendo, but then being wrong about something and then, then fixing it? Well, um, I think it would be explained by the clock speed increase. If AMD's plan, again, assuming Graymon actually has good info here, uh, was originally around it getting to 2.5 gigahertz, but then they've been able to, now that they've been working on this longer, figure out that they actually can reach higher clock speeds, like three gigahertz, for example, that would then allow them to get more, uh, more T-flops, right? And that could explain that increase. And regarding that, we also have Graymon55 replying to Arnold Robbins over here, who was like joking about a 7970XT 3 gigahertz edition coming, referencing the old GCN architecture 7970 gigahertz edition. But Graymon's reply seems to be implying that we don't need a 3 gigahertz version of the 7900XT as some kind of special edition, because he's saying 3 gigahertz plus. Well, this would certainly be really cool if it was true. But again, but again, that three gigahertz does line up with how his original calculation could have come out to 92 uh, teraflops, which is, <laughs> okay, so to put this in context, my understanding, um, and I think, I think the video cards article lined this, ah, did they not put it up against the uh, 6900 XT? I think they at least reference it. Uh, but my understanding is that the, uh, that this would be about four times, yeah, and Video Cards is confirming this, is that this is four times the performance of the 6900 XT. But before we go any farther with this, keep in mind, this is not saying gaming performance. Floating point operations do not just directly translate to gaming performance. So even though this is, if he's right, four times the performance of the 6900 XT at this type of calculation, and is a good sign that this GPU will be much, much stronger than the 6900 XT. This is not a guarantee that we're gonna have four times the gaming performance.
Okay? So I do want to be clear about that. <laughs> anyway, but that is four times as high as the Navi 21. Now, there were other tweets kind of coming uh, around with this referencing, well, what about the 4090? And those ones seem to be indicating 100 teraflops straight up rather than just the 92 here on the 7900. So you're like, well, well is Intel going to be left behind here? <laughs> again, uh, not Intel, did I just say Intel? Is Nvidia going to be left behind here? Well, again, one of the big differences here is the monolithic design versus the, the rumored multi-chip module design on the 7900. Again, th these are a kind of a video cards collecting a bunch of the rumors here. But one thing that um, could explain how the 4090 could still keep up uh, could be it in significantly increasing it, its, its clock speeds um, compared to its previous generation cards. Um, but then also, um, I, I'm not sure that, that video cards has this completely up to date because they're saying the N5 process, whereas the um, there have been rumors that recently suggesting that NVIDIA could be on the N4 process. Now, N4 is not technically 4 nanometer. It's a slightly improved N5 process is my understanding of it. Um, but the, the idea here is uh, that in the previous generation with, you know, AMD's RDNA 2 versus Ampere, I mean, I guess our current generation, AMD has the process node advantage currently. Uh, with, with NVIDIA being on the Samsung 8 nanometer process. Whereas it's looking like if this is true, or especially if this jumps to N4, NVIDIA could actually have the process advantage, which could help them bring in their, their power consumption a bit, uh, other than that we still see rumors of insane power draws. We've even seen a 900 watt rumor. <laughs> um, anyway. So, I don't know, it's tough to, to know what to make all of this, but let's move on to some other stuff. All I've got to say is, those are some big flops. <laughs> and big numbers are good, other than power draw. Anyway, <laughs> um, so in other news, how about Intel GPUs, which might eventually launch? Well, they have their scavenger hunt prize winners, and so it's giving us some sort of pricing although this isn't real pricing, so we don't want to read too much into this. When you have prize winners of some sort of prize, you are supposed to attach a monetary value to that prize, which they've done. With the top end one coming out at 900 and the, um, the, pre uh, the, the performance model being at 700, but that's not the actual price of the card because there's other things in those prize packs. So people getting these wins and then tweeting out their, their, their note, uh, so the $900 value comes from the premium ARC graphics card, along with uh, some Intel ARC branded merchandise and six months of Game Pass for PC. So we'd at least subtract, what, 10 bucks a month for the Game Pass value, so we take off $60, but then Intel ARC graphics branded merchandise. I don't know what that means. I don't know what it is. <laughs> so I don't know how to value that, right? Um, so you'd subtract that amount off of this here too. However, again, there's people getting the, uh, I'll zoom in a bit here, the $700 uh, version coming in with the uh, Intel Performance graphics card. Uh, again, with the Intel Art Graphics branded merchandise and three months of Game Pass for PC. So three months versus six. I don't know if it's the same ARC branded merchandise because it would be nice if they were the same packs. You could be like, well, this one will be $200 less than that one. But given that it's a different amount of Game Pass, there could be different amounts of, um, you know, value of Intel ARC branded merchandise there as well. So, I mean, this WCCF tech article is kind of estimating that the rest of the products value to 100 150 which is giving us a... Uh, 300 to $350 value for the performance card and the 500 to 550 value on the premium card. I don't know how accurate WCCF Tech's estimate is there, but I thought this is kind of interesting seeing some sort of valuation here. Now, we're still just in the, like, some winners are going to be getting these cards sometime soon. At least hopefully when they get them, maybe we'll get some performance benchmarks out of it. 
But, oh man, Intel is really taking their sweet time getting these ARC desktop GPUs out there. And even the laptops are mostly just a paper launch at this point. Now, speaking of new GPUs coming out, uh, once again, we're seeing a bit about the 6950, 6750, 6650 XT refreshes from AMD. Again, this seems like it'll be a pretty minor re uh, refresh. Uh, with slightly faster memory, maybe slightly higher clocks, a little bit of improvement, but hey, an improvement's an improvement as long as they don't try to charge more money for it, hopefully. Uh, but apparently it's confirming the design. This was posted briefly on, a, on Canada Computers and Electronics uh, in like an advertisement that probably shouldn't have actually been posted yet. <laughs> And then it was basically confirming in that picture what these would look like. It looks like this kind of midnight black design, but similar to the other, the reference design other than that. And the rumored release date for these is May 10th. So coming very soon, but, the, but that, uh, you know, and, and pricing and everything has not been completely confirmed to my knowledge. Now, a, a little bit of info. I don't want to dig too much into this is that um, the LLVM patches uh, are confirming that, uh, you know, there's certain RDNA 3 models out there, but I feel like this rumor doesn't really tell us much. It just gives us kind of code names for it and that there's at least, uh, you know, four of them. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't know. Some other people have dug into a lot on speculating what they think all of that means, and uh, I don't know. It doesn't seem like a lot to me. Now, how about the chip shortage? Well, according to the Intel CP, uh, CPU, <laughs> the Intel CEO, Pat Gelsinger, he's anticipating that it could go through 2024, which is worse <laughs> and longer than we've seen predicted by other CEOs. Like I think a while back we saw uh, Lisa Su saying like, more like, um, you know, easing by the ends of 2022 and then going into 2023. Now, one, so so he's saying that it's it's not the materials now, but it's actually the equipment used to manufacture chips, is the context of his claim, and he's also using that as an opportunity to say that they feel like they're better positioned because they have their own internal capacity uh, to leverage their own foundries, right? Versus other people who rely on places like TSMC and Samsung to manufacture things for them. Also, in some quick Intel news. We do see that 14th Gen Core Meteor Lake has powered on, on track to launch in 2023. So basically just that it seems to be um, on track with, with powering on and has successfully booted in Windows, Chrome, and Linux, but we shouldn't see it anytime immediately soon. Like I said, 2023 expected for that one. Now, also speaking of uh, Intel, well, also NVIDIA, it looks like NVIDIA has uh, hired some talent from Intel on the CPU side of things, and this is to assist with their ARM technology. So it looks like the you know NVIDIA buying ARM deal kind of got squashed, but they still are interested in producing ARM chips, and it looks like they're hiring some top-end talent from Intel. Specifically, this is Rafi Marom. I may have pronounced that wrong. Uh, who was Intel's design manager at their Israel facility, uh, being now hired and promoted to senior director, uh, senior CPU director at the forefront of N NVIDIA's ARM-based technologies. And last thing I'll throw out there is that we're getting FSR 2.0 confirmed for Microsoft Flight Simulator, as well as DLSS support, which has already been you know, announced to be coming. It is almost completed. And also saying that Microsoft Flight Simulator, uh, uh, you know, player count and all that is up. But it says that they're working very closely with AMD and NVIDIA, both companies helping to implement uh, the best possible implementations of the technology. So it looks like this might be an interesting game to compare the two uh, once it's out. It's looking like they're going to be bringing FSR 1.0 first, and then they've started to work on FSR 2.0. So that will be included in the future. All right, guys, let me know what you think about all of this in the comments section, and I hope that you have an excellent day.